Yesterday, the Fallout 76 beta was finally open for all platforms, which was very exciting because I pre-ordered the Power Armor Edition for PC, so it was nice to actually play the game on PC. But I spent most of the time yesterday building a settlement, and I now feel comfortable enough to give a full review on Camp's base building and to break it down for you guys to see how it fits in with your playstyle. So I started this playthrough at the beginning of the game where you create your character, and then I played for about two hours. I wanted to get to level five by going through some of the main story missions and to gather as much resources as I could before I started building. So once I leveled up, I found this pretty cool spot to build my first cabin over here by Lumber Mill and the Moonshiner's Cabin. This was supposed to be a pond or something, but the water wasn't showing for me anywhere on the map, you know, because it's the beta. But imagining what the water is supposed to look like and taking a look at this view, I would say that this is a pretty damn fine area. Damn fine. I'm not really going to go over how the menu is set up because I went over that and a few other things in my other video that is linked in the description, but I will say that I love the menu now. It's way more intuitive and easier to navigate, and the overall feeling of building, like snapping objects together and lining things up, it feels just like Fallout 4, which is also a plus. This build is going to be a very simple cabin. I just wanted to see what I could build right off the bat with only leveling up a few times. And like I said, I only played for about two hours up to this point. So while I'm building that, let's get into the review. In my last video about building in 76, I bitched a lot about the limitations. And I would say around 60% of you agreed with me and like 30% had different opinions and respectfully voiced those opinions. And then the last 10% were the online equivalent of screaming children in Target. Even though I mentioned a couple of times that I had only played it for a couple of hours and to take my opinion with a grain of salt. But what did I expect putting an opinion online with a comment section? Regardless of all that, I completely understand why we can't place walls without foundations or roofs without walls. In Fallout 4, we didn't have those limitations, and people could build ridiculous structures floating in the air, which obviously doesn't make sense physically or for an online game. So I get why you have to have a foundation in that regard, and I agree with it. We don't want hovering, unimmersive structures all around the map. But take a look at this. I can't place a wall down unless it's snapping to a foundation, but after I place the wall, it looks like I can move the foundations away from it, which leaves the wall hovering in place. So I didn't mess with this too much, but it looks like floating does exist. And I will say that there is a good possibility that this is a glitch from the beta, but we'll have to wait for the actual game to release to really find out. But overall, camp base building can either be pretty good, about the same as Fallout 4, or incredibly annoying. It all just depends on your play style, and I'll use mine as an example. So outside of being a YouTuber who builds stuff in Fallout, I love playing the game first. I love going through the main story, doing a lot of side quests and exploration, and really experiencing the game and the lore of it. Then I'll dive into settlement building. I mean, I might build like a small house or something while doing that. That's what I did in Fallout 4. But I didn't really start building until I finished the game and wanted to start adding to it with my own settlement. So with that kind of play style, building is pretty much the same as Fallout 4. The biggest difference is that the majority of workshop items are not available to you at first. You have to find plans to unlock them. And the way you find plans is by playing the game. You have a chance to get them from looting, from side quests, events, leveling up, and of course the main story. So if you're like me and prefer to dive into settlement building after you've nearly completed the game, then by that time, I'm speculating here because I haven't actually finish the game, but I'm assuming you will have the majority of things unlocked because you've already found the plans. So I don't think that would really be a big deal. Plus with Fallout 4, we had access to every workshop item, but not necessarily all of the resources we needed to build them. You know, like circuitry or acid or stuff like that that was pretty hard to come by without exploring or playing the game. So even though the items were available, we still couldn't just jump right into settlement building and build whatever we wanted. Now, the flip side of that is if your play style is centered around building, like as soon as you leave the vault, you want to go out and build a massive base, then sediment building in 76 is going to be a nightmare. If this was your play style with Fallout 4, then you had an easier time. You could, you know, more or less skip over the main story, wander around looting and buying shipments of resources, and you'd gather enough to build a massive camp with any item that you wanted. Everything is there and available to you. You just need the resources or the occasional perk. So with 76, on top of finding all the resources that you need, you also have to find the plans to unlock them. So in that regard, it's much more of a pain in the ass. 
And last, if you're very casual about building and playing the game, you just love Fallout and experiencing it, then settlement building is pretty cool. The limitations are a way to keep the game immersive. It makes sense. If you want to build a wall, you need a foundation so it doesn't fall over. If you want to build a roof, you need walls to attach to it. And who leaves a vault and suddenly knows how to build an entire city? So plans are a way to teach your player new things to build. So with that kind of play style, this settlement building system is a great addition because it's all immersive and it goes well with the lore. Real quick, unless I'm completely missing something, this is dumb. When you place down an object and pick it back up, the game retains the collision as if the object is still there. So you see how it's gray? So right now, since I put doors in, I'm essentially trapped. I can't pick up the door and walk out because the collision of it is still there. So the only way for me to leave is to exit workshop mode and open one of these doors or scrap or store something. I thought that was dumb. Anyways. So really, it's all about the perspective. For me, I think the building in this game is just okay. You know, it's not amazing and it's not horrible. It's a solid okay. You know, I'm, I'm a hardcore settlement builder. I'm used to using a ton of mods, making mods, and even building in the creation kit. So I'm used to being able to do literally whatever I want. But with this game, I get it. You know, there are limitations for a reason. And private servers where we can have mods and more freedom might be a possibility in the future. But right now, I'm going to enjoy it and challenge myself to build with the platform that we have. And other than the floating wall, I haven't really seen any glitches or exploits. Like a lot of people are asking about the pillar and rug glitches. So the pillar glitch is not possible anymore because we no longer have the select all function where you select and hold an object and then all the adjacent objects are selected too. That's how the pillar and one of the rug glitches worked. Now the select and hold functionality has been replaced with blueprints. So when you hold A or E or X, depending on your platform, the workshop goes into blueprint mode and allows you to highlight objects and make a blueprint of them. And as far as the other rug glitch goes, where you place an object on the rug and then select the rug and the object on top of it loses its collision so you can clip it through anything, I haven't found the damn plans to build a rug. And no rugs are available to you right off the bat. So I haven't had a chance to test it. But I'll keep you guys updated when my character learns what a rug is. Now, I haven't seen a glitch or an exploit with blueprints yet, but mark my words, if there is a glitch with building, it's going to come for blueprints. I'm telling you, that's where it's going to happen. I'm calling it. It's a new feature, and it deals with multiple objects. That's a recipe for a glitch. And last thing I want to mention is that I wouldn't really worry about building online. Like, if you're worried about people messing with you or destroying your stuff, I know it's a possibility, and I know I've only played the beta, but so far, I don't really see other players unless I'm in the towns. Like, this feels like a Fallout game. I streamed for over an hour, and I didn't see anybody for 45 minutes, and I was walking around a lot, and I only saw people because I went looking for them. So, I know this is the beta, but I'm pretty sure Bethesda is maxing out each instance of their servers so that way they can stress the hell out of them. All I'm saying is that so far I haven't had a single issue with anyone messing with me while I was building. I haven't seen anybody while I was building a settlement. But I hope this video was helpful and gave you some good insight on what building is like. I, I did have fun building this cabin, even though it was very limited and fought me a lot. But I'm excited to unlock more things and experience more of the game and the building system. But let me know what you think. You know, what kind of play style do you have and what do you think of settlement building so far? Let me know in the comments. I'm going to do a full review of the entire game pretty soon. And I'm very close to finishing the Raider Castle that I'm doing in Fallout 4. So both of those videos should be out pretty soon. But thanks for watching, I recently updated my Patreon to include more tiers and rewards, so be sure to check it out for more content from me and to get the inside scoop of what I'm working on. I also updated my merch shop with a ton of new designs that I'm really excited for. I'm starting to focus way more on my Patreon and merch shop, so I really hope you guys enjoy it.